For veteran quarterback Will Howard will lead Ohio State to begin this top five matchup from Alton Stadium. And it will be the 22nd touchback of the season. A look at the starting lineups delivered by Papa Johns. And for Ohio State, they bring in Chip Kelly. Year one is the offensive coordinator, and he has produced a lot of creativity with a lot of weapons. Yeah, and he is first and foremost wants to run the football. I'm very impressed with how this offensive line has played. Seth McLaughlin, one of those transfer portal acquisitions came from Alabama was a starter for Alabama and he has really solidified the inside of this Ohio State offensive line Dan Lanning was clear this is not a team that you can say we're going to take one thing away because the second you take one thing away they have everything else at their disposal that includes the elite running back duo of Judkins and Henderson as Henderson splits out wide on first down Howard to the air over the middle tipped at the line caught by G Scott and he'll pick up five on a fortuitous bounce for OSU. Now this is good for both teams, right? Oregon's able to get a hand on the football. It was an empty backfield, good protection, and then Gee comes down with the ball. Or Gee comes down with the ball. Officially listed that second down and four. Both teams talked about staying on schedule against two defense that's, that have played well. Quick throw. Jeremiah Smith, his first catch of the day, and he's going to navigate his way towards that first down marker. So the fabulous freshman with his early stat in this top five matchup, Will Howard coming over from Kansas State. He has played in big games, and he mentioned yeah. loud environments don't necessarily phase him. He knows how to handle himself. Yeah, he's a very mature guy. We're going to see two quarterbacks almost identical in their experience, in their numbers this year. He's bigger though than Dylan Gabriel. He is a big guy, can see over the line, and is an outstanding runner as well. Howard in the pocket to the sideline, incomplete, a little bit too tall for Carnell Tate against this Oregon defense. And so far, we've been looking out for number one. Jordan Burge have not found him with this defensive unit that's looked a lot better, especially the last couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, they've been solid. And now without Burch, and who's a real leader, they're going to have to lean on Derek Harmon on the inside. A transfer from Michigan State. Played very well last week against his old team. He's going to have to pick up some of the slack. Also, Jeff Bassa back full strength after battling an ankle injury for most of the early part of this season. Is a big guy to have back. Still yet to go to the ground, and they will here with Henderson. And he spilled out. Short gain of three. Jabbar Muhammad goes low and sets up third and long. A lot of guys around the line of scrimmage. It was a condensed formation that time by Ohio State and allowed Oregon to get a lot of bodies around the line and able to stop it for a short game. Big third down play here. Oregon allowing just 31% on third down this year. Smith, the motion man. Third and seven. Howard fires. Smith got it. Fighting. He's short. Excellent job on the quick tackle by Brandon Johnson. Chip Kelly really believes that the size and strength of their wide receivers can be an advantage in this game against smaller defensive backs. But a nice tackle there by Brandon Johnson. And... Jeremiah not able to get loose. Here's the first fourth down. We talked about it. Both coaches talked about how important fourth down plays are going to be in this game to sustain drives and to keep them teams on the field. You've got the big body of Henderson, 5'10", nearly 210 pounds, physical runner. Howard's going to keep it himself, and he's got the first down and then some. Plenty of space to work with as he sneaks through and moves the sticks. Uh, he's six foot four and fully 235 pounds, going right behind his fellow transfer center, Seth McLaughlin, and easily picks up the first down. We've seen Jeremiah Smith get his hands on the ball. Mecca Abuka coming off a career high three touchdowns a week ago against Iowa. Might be time to get him involved as well. Judkins the back, Howard to the air, over the middle, and it is fought for. Ripped away by Oregon, oh, but they're, they're going to call that a first State. down. Kazmarek was the intended target. They'll give him the catch on a big gain down the middle. It's a perfect throw by Will Howard. And if he had control as he hit the ground, it can't be ripped out at that point. The question is, does he have full control? 
Terry, what do you see here? Yeah, Todd, I'm not seeing him get control right away. I think this should have been stopped for review. This is a big play. A gain of 32. Ohio State gets quickly to the line and ran the play to Judkins. It's a perfect throw. Be beautiful ball placement. He's bobbling it on his way to the ground. Jeff Bossa was with him stride oh. for stride, and the linebacker eventually came away with the football on the way up. Chip Kelly smartly getting to the line and getting the ball snapped right away before there could be a stoppage. Already feeling the comfortability from the fifth-year quarterback, Will Howard. And now Howard to the outside, Judkins. Room to work with a first down. Judkins out of bounds inside the five. First and goal and a gain of 16. Tysheem Johnson, number zero. A safety was on the boundary on the sideline and got tangled up with G. Scott and got knocked to the ground. And when he got up, he was facing the end zone and had no idea the ball was thrown behind him. And that's why Henderson was able to get so close to the goal line. Tenth play of the drive, this opening drive of this big time game. Yeah, and as Ryan Day told KT, the best way to take a crowd out is to be physical and move the football down the field. Beautiful drive to open this game. Howard keeps. Howard scores. Touchdown, Ohio State. What a start for the Buckeyes. Great block by G. Scott, the tight end. I was at practice on Wednesday and saw this a lot in their red zone. Watch G. Scott collapse down in. They're going to fake and follow. So we got to lead back with Judkins, and the big quarterback gets right on his hip and into the end zone. He's an excellent runner, particularly in the red zone. And for Ohio State now, 22 red zone trips, 21 touchdowns. Can't be much better than that. Fielding will come on for the extra point. A little hesitation, but he does knock it through to make it 7 0. Exception that looked like it should have been his taken away. Terry McCauley, what'd you see on the play? Yeah, Noah. Obviously, we know this should have been stopped and looked at. But, but we never see the receiver gain full control. This is just a battle between two players. And it's clear the Oregon player ends up with control. Ball, long enough to complete the uh, to, to perform that comment of the game on the ground. This is an interception in my mind. And they did not go back to review it. It was the quick play on the handoff yeah. to Judkins and heads up. A lot of credit to the yeah. Ohio State offense for the way they operated on that opening drive. Fielding will send it away. And this will be another touchback for this Oregon offense. A look at the starting lineups presented and delivered by Papa John's. It's an offense led by a veteran quarterback. Once again, Will Stein, a younger offensive coordinator, and they've got a number of options themselves. They really do. They've got a great slot receiver and Tez Johnson, but I think Terrence Ferguson, the tight end number three, can be an X factor for Oregon today. I mean, he's a matchup problem. He's an elite receiving tight end, 6'5", 265. He'll be a Sunday player. And he's a matchup problem for this very stout Ohio State defense. He's also built a quick rapport with his transfer quarterback, Dylan Gabriel, coming over from Oklahoma. As Todd mentioned, nearly identical numbers to Will Howard on the other side. A lot of motion, including with Holden, but they're going to hand it off. Jordan James, reversing field, slips a tackle. He turns a negative into a positive and picks up four. Tui Molowau has to come from behind. Now the strength of this Ohio State defense is their front. They have two powerful edge rushers, but I think their two inside tackles are the best part of their team. Go tempo, quick throw to the outside for Evan Stewart, and he'll fight forward to make it third down and one for Dylan Gabriel and this Oregon offense. Gabriel, a calming presence, but he also brings this confidence and swagger to this team. Yeah, I mean, he has more starts than anybody in college football ever, right? And, and the guy has played in three different programs and played well. And he's a natural thrower, throws a very catchable pass, and the most accurate passer in all of college football coming into today. Reading the defense, he'll take it himself and keep the legs churning. He's got the first down. Dylan Gabriel is not nearly as big as Will Howard. He's listed at 5'10", but he's pretty powerfully built in his lower body. And he's able to kind of churn his legs here, go behind his big center, for the first down. Some early pace reminiscent of when Chip Kelly was the head coach here at Oregon. 
yet to huddle on this opening drive. Gabriel, the southpaw delivers, and it's incomplete. Broken up by Caleb Downs as he was looking for that tight end, Ferguson. Yeah, beautiful coverage by Caleb Downs. Both these safeties in Jim Knowles' defense are outstanding. Downs was the most coveted transfer portal acquisition. Led the Alabama defense in tackles last year as a true freshman and came over and, uh, you know, just stepped right in beautifully to a very veteran defensive unit. A unit that the vast majority of these starters were here last season in similar or exactly identical roles. A late handoff, James, and he doesn't go very far, gets a yard. It'll set up third down and nine against an Ohio State defense that is menacing. One of the best in the country, in fact, a number of categories, they lead the country. Yeah, well, again, it starts up front. They're not a heavy blitz team because they don't have to be. Gabriel got it. James, and it's going to be fourth down and three as Styles makes the tackle. And now it's going to be a decision time for Oregon in this offense. Well, we saw Ohio State go for a fourth and very short. This is a different situation, though. It's fourth and at least two and a half, and you're on your side of the 50-yard line. Got to trust that your defense can have a better series and try to pin them back with a punt. So Ross James will come on. Had a 69-yard punt against Boise State week two this year, and Brandon Innes back deep for the return. See if they can flip the field. This one angling. Will bounce take somewhat of a note that you can use before you run out with Jeremiah Smith. He's come in as a freshman, dominated. Six receiving touchdowns, tied for the most among FBS freshmen, first true freshman in school history with that type of number in five straight games to start his career. And you look at the explosive plays that he can help develop for this offense. Then you start putting him in all-time categories with a guy like Chris Carter. And he is on pace to not just break, but shatter his true freshman records at Ohio State. He has meant so much to this program. And Ryan Day was most impressed with how physically ready he was when he stepped on campus to take the beating of a full season. We've already seen it with a couple of catches on their first drive. Judkins and Abuka in the backfield on first down. And they will hand it off. Abuka off the edge. That's across the 20. It's a first down run of 12. And you see the unselfishness of Judkins, right? I mean, he hasn't even had a carry in the game, I don't think. But he's the lead blocker for Abuka. And this is a team that is, they are all in together on what their vision and what their goals are. Chip Kelly really felt like they could attack the perimeter of this Oregon defense. That's about the third play we've seen, either running or quick passing to the perimeter because of the size and strength of their receivers and the way they block outside on the perimeter as well. Another efficient start for Howard, five of six, after a combined 19 of 19 to start the last two weeks. This time he gets away from a sack, and he will lob it out of bounds. Uyunglele came on the pressure and forced Howard out of the pocket quickly. Yeah, Uyunglele, one of those young edge guys. They got a pair of true sophomores playing on the edge. Nobody accounted for him, and Howard did a nice job of getting away from a free rusher. Looked like a little bit of a mistake by the Ohio State pass protection. Two guys on one, nobody on the edge rusher, and Howard does the only thing he can do, which is throw the ball away and live to play second down. Abuka initially in the backfield. Now to the slot. Tate the motion man. Second and ten. Handoff. Judkins. No running room. Derek Harmon closed up the hole. Yeah, Derek Harmon shows some quickness along with power. Does a great job. Here he is right here. Watch how quick he is getting off the ball into the backfield. And he beats Donovan Jackson. And it's Oregon football. Wow. This ball came out. Harmon comes away with it, ripped it away from Judkins. Take a look right here. Yeah, he didn't even go for the tackle. He was in the backfield and just went for the football. They had one turnover that they should have had and didn't get. Now they get one. What a play by Harmon. He beat the best offensive lineman, Donovan Jackson, with a quick move into the backfield and then just took the ball away from Quinshawn Judkins. The officials are still conferencing right around the 28. It came down almost simultaneously. Terry, did you see anything here on this play as they kind of came away with the football? So far, it's he clearly loses control, and then there seems to be a battle, and we lose sight of the football. Because the ball carrier lost the ball during the tackle. Oregon football. 
I haven't seen anything yet to dispute that so far, guys. I think the fact that Harmon was in the backfield so quickly, it surprised Judkins. And then Harmon just didn't even worry about trying to tackle the ball carrier. He just tried to go get the football. Please reset the game clock to 6.39. Well, last week, as impressive as Ohio State was in their win against Iowa, they only had seven points in the first half. They were a slow starter, and turnovers were a part of that. They had an interception and a fumble by Jeremiah Smith, and now a short field for the Oregon offense if this play stands. And they will take the time to take a few extra looks at this fumble from Judkin. Well, back here in Eugene, the call was confirmed. The fumble stands, and what a play by Derek Harmon. And this is the end of it. Harmon goes right for the football, and with his size and strength, rips it away. Watch how quick now he gets into the backfield. He anticipates the snap count. He beats Donovan Jackson. Actually, <laughs> that was a heck of a play. That was Amari Washington, 52, who got in the backfield, and Harmon came through to make the play on the ball. So now it's a short field. Dylan Gabriel has loved the complimentary football they're playing, and it helps when you've got this guy, Jordan James, running over defenders. First and goal inside the five. 25 on the ground the hard way. Well, we talked about the Ohio State receivers blocking. Watch the blocking downfield by Oregon's Holden and Evan Stewart, number one, number seven, staying on their blocks and allowing their back to get down inside the five-yard line. Big explosive runs can only happen if you have good blocking on the perimeter, and Oregon did a great job on that one. James with 166 yards and a touchdown last week in the win over Michigan State. Now here it is, first and goal. Both teams had talked about being efficient in this area. James, can he pay it off? Yes, sir! Touchdown, Oregon! They capitalize on the short field from the fumble. And now this Oregon offense initially looked like they were going to stay on. They'll quickly shift back into the extra point. Sappington. Oh, and a bot snap. Looking to get away. Toss it, picked off. Ransom looking to take it the other way. Down the sideline. Ransom with blocking. Can he get there? No. Chaos already in Eugene. Well. You'd like to think this is automatic. It was a good snap, just a bobbled hold. It was the snap from Luke Basso and the hold by Luke Dunn. And then Dunn tried to make something happen. Ransom was right there, and at a moment looked like he was going to take it the distance for two points. And normally, Ross James, the punter, is their traditional holder on both field goals and extra points. But it was the touchdown by James that helped get this back to what was nearly a tie game. Yeah, he runs with such power. I mean, he is very powerfully built, runs behind his pads. They like to run to the left behind Josh Connerly, their left tackle. Ashad Struther, also the left guard in there, clearing the way. They capitalize on the turnover. Just like last week, the Iowa game, the Ohio State turnover kind of slowed them down a little bit in the first half. The Hawkeyes weren't able to capitalize. The Ducks were on this one. So Sappington will send it away. Abuka waiting deep. And Abuka will let this one fly once again for another touchback. 
Well, at Peacock, we know education can be expensive, so your entertainment shouldn't be as well. Now eligible students can stream for just $1.99 per month for 12 months, as opposed to the regular $7.99. Visit Peacock.com slash student to unlock this deal. All right, so now both offenses have found the end zone. You had one that stalled out and punted it back. The other one in this Ohio State offense that turned it over on the fumble. But they've been moving the ball, and we've seen yeah. the efficiency and just how explosive they can be when they're locked in. And the balance. I mean, Will Howard has been accurate throwing the football. They've had a blend of run and pass. And different guys carrying the football or touching the football. Henderson in there on first down. Quick throw, Abuka gets away from the first. Not the second. And goal by Jamari Caldwell. The big 6 one 3 40, And he moves like he's got maybe 100 pounds off of him. Well, Brandon Johnson, number three, made the play. He doesn't get the tackle, but he slows him up enough to allow help to come from the inside. And Caldwell is there to finish him off. Second down and 12, and we've got a flag, and let's hear from Larry Smith. Ball start, offense, number 71, five-yard penalty, second down. And don't be surprised, this is right now, this will be the loudest that this stadium has been. Ohio State quieted him down. You see the movement by Josh Simmons, the left tackle. Ohio State quiet, quieted him down in the first drive. Oregon gets the score. Now they get a penalty. Now it's time for them to crank it up. Play clock down to five on second and 17. Howard going to take it himself, and he's got some wheels. Gets it across the 20 to the 24. I think they wanted to run a shovel pass here to Brandon Ennis, number 11. Watch as Ennis comes across. He's covered, and so Will Howard has to keep the ball. The shovel pass is not there. He ends up keeping it for a very short game, and now third and 11 for the Buckeyes. Packed house at Autzen Stadium. Ready for this third and 11. I think another penalty. That's two false starts on this possession. False start. Offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty, third down. G. Scott, the tight end. You know, every team practices with crowd noise. I was at Ohio State's practice on Wednesday, and they were cranking noise in. Just a little bit of a flinch. And you just have to really try to concentrate. And if you can't hear it all, you have to watch the football. You have to look in and keep your eyes on the ball and not move until that ball moves. There's a reason that Oregon has won 31 of 32 games in this stadium. Play clock down to two. Third and 16. Quick throw. Howard with a completion. Abuka. Nowhere to go. Kobe Savage. Fourth down. Kobe Savage, very familiar with Will Howard. They were teammates at Kansas State. Both transferred to different places, and uh, these smaller defensive backs are doing a pretty good job tackling on the perimeter. Ohio State trying to get the ball quickly to their bigger receivers, and Oregon is stepping up to the challenge out there in the last couple drives. So Joe McGuire, the Australian sophomore, will come out to punt, and it'll be Tez Johnson, who is incredibly dangerous and dynamic with the ball in his hands back to return he had a touchdown of 85 yards on a return against Boise State the play clock ran out and they do whistle it dead Delay a game. Kitchen team. Five yard penalty. Four count. It is a cacophony of noise. Yeah. And the one, one thing you brought up that was interesting is 
the guards and the center maybe can hear. Yeah. But once you get tackles and beyond, right. that's where it really gets tricky. Yeah, and all it takes is a little flinch, you know. And, and if you're going on a longer counter, trying to check at the line of scrimmage, it becomes even more difficult. Three penalties on this drive against Ohio State. And now Johnson waiting back. We'll bring it in on the fair catch at the 41. A 41-yard punt. Game number four, Ohio State over number two, Oregon. Our own Joshua Perry, a big part of that team as a captain. And the Buckeyes with another national championship to their name. So Oregon has gotten the crowd back involved after the fumble. They get the touchdown, and now the defensive stop with a chance to pull ahead for the first time. Tez Johnson coming out of the backfield. They got to find a way to get him involved. Gabriel looking that way and sets set up the screen. It's Ferguson, the tight end, and he just barrels over Jordan Hancock to pick up four. Nice idea. Try to use Johnson as kind of a decoy on that and slip the screen to the tight end. Ohio State reacted pretty quickly. James stays in there. Play action pass. Gabriel throws middle. Open. Stewart's got it. Big game deep in Ohio State territory. Nice job by Dylan Gabriel finding the open void in the defense. Beyond the one safety and before Ransom could get there. They got this playoff quick and there was a free edge rusher as Holden will get it back to the line of scrimmage and out of bounds. Now there's there's a flag down. It almost looked like the center snapped it before anybody else was ready for it. We'll see if it is against the sophomore. Pancho Lalaulu. The legal shift on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. And because he snapped it early, yeah. that's what triggered it. Yeah, there was still movement. They weren't set, and the ball was snapped. And so we saw this affect Ohio State their last drive. You wouldn't expect the home team to be affected for a penalty like that, but it backs them up nonetheless. Excellent throw on the long completion though from Gabriel now four or five with 41 yards. First down and 15. James up the gut and just keeps those legs churning gets a pass the initial line of scrimmage to the 26 yard line. Yeah, he's coming off his best game as a running back 24 carries 166 yards last week against Michigan State. Running with a lot of confidence. Practices hard. They love his energy. They love his attitude. Now he's out as a wide receiver here. Empty backfield. Johnson in motion to the backfield on second and eight. Gabriel stands in there. Steps into one. Incomplete. Looking for Stewart. Tight coverage by Aikmanosin. And no flag comes in. Well, he had Stewart coming on the over route. And he had... Tez Johnson on a little option route. Looks like a lot of grabbing and holding there. Big Benoson gets away with it here. Left hand around the waist, but he makes a play on the ball. These two corners for Ohio State have great length. Long arms, able to reach in and knock the ball away. They also had Tez Johnson inside on an option route, and he got knocked down. Look at this formation. And they will run it. Lob it to the sideline and nobody's home. Put it in the direction in between both Ferguson and Holden. And now it's fourth down and eight. And a long field goal likely coming up for Oregon. Yeah, funky formation here. Will Stein, he's only got two guys over here, but whatever the route was supposed to be, there's a miscommunication. You got to get rid of this ball quick. And obviously not on the same page between Dylan Gabriel and the outside receivers to the left. So this is going to be Atticus Sappington. There was a question whether it was him or Andrew Boyle who would attempt these longer field goals. This one from 44. Sappington, 6 of 7 on the season. And he's 2 for 2 from between 40 and 49. Not this one. Wide right. Missed opportunity for Oregon with a short field once again. Yeah, you see the missed kick, good hold, good snap this time, just a bad kick. But even going back to that third down play, I don't really understand why you get so tricky on that third down play. You're moving the ball, your quarterback's hot. 
give him a chance to make a normal throw on a normal play call on third and seven. So Ohio State had taken the crowd out of it on that opening 10 play drive down the field. Oregon got the crowd back involved with a fumble. And now can Ohio State settle back in offensively after the turnover and the penalties push them backward on the last one. Henderson through the hole. Henderson, big gain. First down. Again, in the absence of Birch, Oregon is playing with two inside tackles and those two sophomore edge rushers. It's more of a passing set defensively and capitalized that time by Ohio State. Right, the hot hand. Henderson, he's a home run hitter. Travion Henderson, one man to beat, out of bounds. First and goal, he goes 55 down the sideline. Watch the block by Josh Simmons, the left tackle. He's playing his best football at Ohio State. Holds his point, and then the speed of Henderson, a bad angle by Tysheem Johnson, number zero. And this is a legit home run hitter every time he touches the ball. Brandon Johnson with a hustle play to save the touchdown, but now Ohio State with a lineman down behind the play. It is Tegra Shabola, the right guard. So Shabola down with 10 seconds remaining in this first quarter. And it felt like it was building in getting Henderson the football. He had only had the one carry through the first couple of drives. And then in those last two carries, yeah. he's gone 70 yards down the field. Meanwhile, Austin Saraveld is looking like he's going to get set to check in the game. Remember last time inside the five, there was the fake and follow the run by Will Howard. They like him running the football in this part of the field. Field running back duo of Henderson and Judkins, two of the more decorated running backs in the entirety of FBS to this point in their careers. And they've really had to get comfortable with one another. For more on that, we go down to Catherine Tapp. Yeah, Judkins said it's been super beneficial to learn from Travion Henderson. He told me Trey knows the culture of OSU and everything about it. He's been through the highs, the lows with the program. So I'm embracing everything that he's told me and taught me about this school. From the on-field standpoint, he said I try to implement what he knows into my game and also I try to teach him things as well. We help each other on and off the field. We have a great relationship and he was extremely positive about playing with him on this team this season, guys. Well, Travion Henderson, KT, has been such a mainstay for Ohio State his entire career here. He could have easily left for the yeah. NFL. And then, especially when you bring in a guy who was so good at Ole Miss and Quinn yeah. John Judkins, and yet Ryan Day says they get along and they actually cheer for one another when they're not on the field. Yeah, and you know, the beauty of it is, and Chip Kelly did some research, talked to Nick Saban, and he told him how much he loved having two backs to keep them both fresh, particularly into the fourth quarters of games and late in the season. He's got that luxury right now. So Henderson with 70 yards on the previous two carries. It'll be Judkins now back in there on first and goal. Howard keeps. Howard will not get there. Kobe Savage, his former teammate, gets all up in his face. You see the smile back and forth as he makes it second and goal. Uh, Tuioli, number 44, also involved there on the edge. They do a nice job of stringing it out. It looked like Will Howard would get to the corner, but Savage able to fight off the block of Abuka, who's an excellent blocker, and make a play. They'll go quickly here. Three in the backfield, including Gerd. Hand it. Judkins jamming his way in. Touchdown, Ohio State. Sixth of the year for Quinshawn Judkins. Yeah, Patrick Gerd has got the key block on that. Did a beautiful job of coming out of the backfield. That one looked like a throwback and a tribute to Woody Hayes coming into the full house backfield. But watch this block leading the way for Judkins. He has been a touchdown machine now, averaging a score per game as Fielding's extra point makes it 14 to 6. Well, this team just has so many weapons and the ability to explode at any time. 
Couple slower drives, and then Travion Henderson with back-to-back runs. Only one carry before this. Two explosive runs, and all of a sudden, Ohio State is down inside the five-yard line, and then they pay it off with his sidekick. When Sean Judkins gets the touchdown, Travion Henderson did the legwork, and the partnership continues to pay dividends. I mean, there's a reason these guys are our big shots brought to you by Nissan. I mean, that's what they do. They go out there. They just always seem to contribute at the right moments, the right times. And when you think the offense is starting to find a lull, it's that home yeah. run ability. It's not thunder and lightning. It's lightning and lightning. And it's thunder and thunder. It's both because they're <laughs> right. both strong enough to break tackles and they're both fast enough to run away from defenders and make big plays. So they are they are the same guy. They're, there's no change of pace with these two guys. They're the exact same type of running backs. Fielding will send it away to Whittington, who also had an impressive return week two against Boise State. Special teams have been a spark plug for Oregon, but not this time as Whittington lets it sail into the end zone. Don't miss St. Dennis Medical, an all-new comedy about Oregon's third best medical center. From the network that brought you The Office, St. Dennis Medical premieres November 12th on NBC and Peacock. A great look at the United Cam as Dylan Gabriel and this Oregon offense come back on the field. Gabriel just four of seven. He's been the most accurate passer in all of college football to this point of the season. They still have not found a way to get the ball to Tez Johnson. I think that's the one matchup going against the nickel. Jordan Hancock, number seven. That's the one matchup that Jim Knowles was most concerned about coming into the ball game. Johnson the motion man. James the back. Now Holden. Oh, tough snap. Gabriel does get to it. Fires on the run. James. Or make it Johnson with the catch. He's actually going to lose yardage on the play. Well, second bad snap we've seen from Lala Ulu. And behind the chains again against this very tough Ohio State defense. That's a defense that's number one in scoring in FBS. Given up just 10 total points in the second half this season. They get stronger as the game goes. All Americans at every level. Play action pass Gabriel in the pocket. That's a deep ball down the sideline. Stewart takes the top off. Dragging his way down the field. Burke couldn't bring him down. Stewart gashing once again. Well, Stewart is the speed X. He's the guy that can do this. Working against the best, that little stutter step throws Denzel Burke, the best cover guy on this Ohio State defense. And you see the breakaway speed by Stewart. This boy was changed at the line of scrimmage by Will Stein. And a whistle. They will stop this before the play. You know, it's interesting. Oregon's offensive coordinator, Will Stein, is on the field. Most offensive coordinators are in the box. He likes to be on the field, and he makes a lot of checks. The on the field is confirmed. We're looking to see where the runner stepped out of bounds. Well, Stewart did a great job of playing through the bear hug of Denzel Burke. Yeah. The question is whether or not he did keep his footing in bounds all the way for 69 yards. But it is interesting. You just don't see that very often with an offensive corner. I'll take another look here. It's good there. Good there. Seems to be good there. And keeps it rolling. If it does stand, it'll be the longest play from scrimmage this year for Oregon. He does a great job of staying in bounds with a guy draped all over him. And you see the strength of Evan Stewart. Protects the football and drags for extra yardage. But Will Stein, that play was changed at the line of scrimmage. You could see them pause and look to the sideline. They saw something they wanted in the coverage. They called for the, the hesitation move by Stewart, one-on-one -on, -one on Denzel Burke, and it paid off. The ruling on the field and the spot of the ball have both been confirmed. First down. Yeah, see, there's the check. So they gave the fake count. They changed the play. They had off coverage to their fastest receiver. And they got the big play. Stewart has three catches, 101 yards, including that last one to set up first and goal. 
And that's what he does. They said he still needs to develop in other areas, but he can take the top off the defense. A vertical threat for Oregon. Handoff on first down, and Tui Molowau gets in there immediately to wrap him up. Uh, he just read this play. They tried to pull a lineman, a guard, to pick him up, and he was too quick. The guard just totally whipped. Watch Tui Molowau beat the guard's block and into the backfield. And these two edge guys, JT and Jack Sawyer, are excellent run defenders. Second and goal, Gabriel fires. Gabriel on target. Touchdown, Evan Stewart. There is a flag down. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. During the play, personal foul, face mask, defense number seven. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Noah, you said there are areas that they wanted to see Evan Stewart improve on. One was being more physical against press coverage. This was press coverage by Denzel Burke, and he beat it. Drew a penalty as well, but he beat it right off the snap, beat the press coverage. That was the one area that Will Stein said he needs to get better at that. Big time win for Churchill, and now Oregon trying to do the same as they climb their way back, falling down on that first possession. And Ohio State will get this. It's going to be a kickoff at midfield because of the penalty on the touchdown. There's that face mask 15 yards. So you've got to imagine that another touchback in all likelihood is loading for Dan Lanning's team. And we'll see if they try to get tricky with this. And they will. Oh, wow. Off of the Ohio State player. And Oregon gets right on top of it. Did they get there first? That was outstanding work. I don't know if they did this on purpose or not, Noah. I, I think they were just maybe trying to squib it, but they it hit the Ohio State and player. And they have it. Quick. Yeah. The ball did not go 10 yards, but the Ohio State player went to try to touch the ball and recover it. And it was such a hard kick. It just came right off me. He actually tried to get out of the way. And Oregon was able to come up with it. What a play. Boyle came in, and LaMonico just, he could not, or make it Burke, actually, on the tearaway jersey. That was unbelievable yeah. altogether. I've never seen anything quite like that. <laughs> and to your point, I don't even know if you could do it again if you did try. Yeah. I mean, you typically don't kick an onside kick that hard. No. Right? That ball was drilled, and the return man tried to get out of the way to let somebody in the back row get it. And Oregon able to capitalize on, I guess this doesn't go down as a turnover, but it's just like a turnover in a short field for the Ducks again. I feel like Stefan from SNL. This game has everything. <laughs> right now, it just feels like the unexpected is becoming expected. And now Oregon with another crack offensively, and we'll see what Gabriel and company have in store. And they will whistle this one. Timeout, Oregon. Timeout, Oregon. It's the first of the half. Will be 30 seconds in length. I mean, I think we got to take another look at this. Yeah. This, this is. Some of the craziest bounces I've ever seen. I mean, Oregon reacted like that was done intentionally, the way they went to the football. But you just don't see an onside kick like that. Normally, you dribble it. You wait till it gets 10 yards. You try to block those guys and get to the ball. And that time, the Ohio State returner was trying to get out of the way. And it hit him and came back towards Oregon. Roger. Sally Apaga, tight end, a freshman. He actually has been a special team standout all year. They've loved what he's brought to that unit. And this is a team that's used special teams, including that Boise State game, as a spark this season. Now it's Gabriel with time over the middle, on target again. This time it's Holden in stride, and he brings it to the 10. Uh, this starts with Dylan Gabriel being able to field a high snap. Another bad snap. Gabriel fields it. Then it's excellent protection. 
The back stays in to help. He's able to step up in a clean pocket and deliver the deep in route for a big game. I mean, Dylan Gabriel, you knew, was not going to be phased by a big game like this, a big atmosphere. He led his Oklahoma team to the win in the Red River, Red River rivalry last year with a minute 18 to play over Texas. And off for James, and he'll lose a yard. A nice play by Caleb Downs. I mean, these two safeties, Downs and Ransom, they play so downhill. And this Jim Knowles defense, those guys have to fill the alley and get really involved in the run defense. They're both excellent tacklers. Now there's a penalty down. And some jawing back and forth. Looked like Igbenosin is upset with the officials along the side. So we'll wait for the call from Larry Smith to get some clarity. Flagrant, unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number one for spinning on an opponent. Number one is ejected from the ballgame. Wow. Oh, my. Trayshawn Holden, who is one of the leading receivers of this Oregon team, has just been sent away from this game for spitting on Davis and Igbenosin. I mean, why? It's the biggest game of the year. Why even do that? You're such a valuable part of this team, and now you have hurt yourself and your team. Just no excuse for that at all. This is an Oregon offense already playing without Gary Bryant Jr., who's trying to work himself back from injury at that wide receiver spot. We've seen Stewart have some big catches, but Holden just had the huge 32-yard gain to get them into a goal to go. I mean, I get the back and forth, the jawing, but that is just ridiculous. I wondered if that was it, the way Igbenosin was coming over the sideline, rubbing his face and asking for a towel. Unbelievable. And so now second and goal from the 25, and James is trying to get some of it back. We'll get it to the 22. We've already had a missed field goal from 44 yards out, although you wonder if Boyle would come in there as Holden makes his way off the field, and that'll be the last we see of him tonight. Tough way to finish for the Alabama transfer. Third and goal from the 22. Gabriel may have been tipped, didn't matter, as it's caught by Stewart out of bounds. It'll get it back to the nine and make it a much more manageable field goal. Yeah. Well, needless to say, Evan Stewart is going to have to continue to step up and be a bigger part of this offense. Already now his third catch, I believe, and that was a good one just to get, or five receptions, just to get them into this range. He's got 124 yards in this game. I mean, Tess Johnson has a catch, and yeah. it's negative two yards. Meanwhile, Terrence Ferguson just one catch for three. It'll be Atticus Sappington who missed from 44. This one from 27 to put his team up for the first time here today. James the holder this time, and he drills it. Oregon capitalized a couple of weeks here. You know, you mentioned Kayvon Thibodeau. The interesting thing, when Oregon beat Ohio State a few years ago in Columbus, it was a big upset early in the year. And one of the big stories that week was the absence of Kayvon Thibodeau. He was unable to play because of injury, and they thought that would really affect Oregon's defense, and they were still able to find a way to win the football game without their best defensive lineman in this one in Birch. So Oregon back to the defensive side for the first time with a lead and another touchback this time from Sappington. I mean, this game has just gone in every which direction so far. We call these key plays. This was on the first drive that easily could have been an interception for Bassa. It was called a catch. Then a rip away by Derek Harmon on Quinshawn Judkins set up the short field. This is still one of the most yeah. insane plays that we've seen. And then it led to an eventual ejection as Holden spit on Igbenosin. We haven't even shown you an, a missed extra point, a yeah. missed two-point conversion that was nearly then taken all the way back. We've <laughs> seen in a quarter, not even a half, more than we normally see in an entire game. And here with 10.09 to play, we'll see how Ohio State responds. And a one-point football game. Henderson, not this time, denied at the line of scrimmage. 
Second and nine. Henderson to the outside. Caught up. Yeah. Well, they, they, they love having him back at full strength. He's a big physical linebacker who can run sideline to sideline. Here he is here. Henderson, we've already talked about his speed. And Bassa tracks him down and knocks him out for a very short game. Back-to-back big-time plays by this Oregon defense against the run of Ohio State. Buckeyes 0 for 2 on third down so far. Jeremiah Smith by himself at the top of the screen. Matched up with Jabbar Muhammad. Howard wide open. G. Scott down inside the 40. Wow, this is a great route by G. Scott. We talk about these wide receivers. They got a matchup in here. G. Scott's just going to run a slant, and he's going to get separation. And beautiful ball by Will Howard to a guy you don't necessarily expect that they would look for the matchup, but they got it. G. Scott runs a nice route, makes a good hands catch, and then shows a little bit after the catch. Injured player down is Josh Simmons, the left tackle. Transfer from San Diego State a couple years ago. Started 13 games last year. Started all five here this year. And take a look exactly why he went down battling with Uyunglele on the edge. Yeah, just kind of you could see it kind of gave out on him. In his pass protection and he has played extremely well this year. Last year he struggled a little bit coming over from San Diego State. And the offensive tackles took a lot of criticism last season, but this year, both he on the left side and Josh Fryer, the right tackle, have played really, really well. well overall, this offensive line has yeah. been excellent for this season. Running the football has been a strength, pass protection, but Simmons, Donovan Jackson, and since he's been healthy and come back, they've really taken that step forward. You mentioned Seth McLaughlin, the transfer at center. Chabola, who went down earlier, looked like he returned, and then Fryer, as mentioned, on the right side. But this would be a tough loss yeah. as yeah, then. They're going to get a cart, too. I mean, I mean, the way he went down, it just looked like that knee kind of gave out on him. And that's going to bring Zen Mahalski, number 65, into the game at left tackle. So Mahalski on one side. We saw Saraveld come in for Shabola. And just not what you want to see for the senior from San Diego. No. Just so much experience coming in. 31 starts in his career. And Simmons will make his way back. Quick reaction as well to get him onto the cart. So yeah, now Ohio State, as you just said, two backups in their starting offensive line conceivably for the rest of the game. We'll wait to see what Chabola looks like, if he can make his way back consistently. He was trying earlier. But it all still for a first down here at the 41. Howard feeling the pressure. Harmon couldn't get there. Howard gets away. It's Henderson on the dump down. Henderson turns it into a three-yard gain. A really good job by Will Howard avoiding the sack, avoiding the negative play. It's well defended by Oregon. But you're going to see the strength of Will Howard. He gets away from Harmon. Quickness and then just dumps it. Just gets something out of the play, which he does, to keep the drive alive. This is one thing that Seth McLaughlin told us about Will Howard. Because of his size and his athleticism, he can shug away yeah. some of those free rushers. And he did it there. Counts as a rush for Henderson. This time it's Judkins exploding through the center. And he'll make it third down and short. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, th this is going to be a two down territory for Ryan Day. Already went for it on one first down, a fourth down with a quarterback sneak. This could be a play here where they maybe show run and take a big shot down the field, knowing that they're going to go for it on fourth down. But Jeremiah Smith up here. Howard kept it on fourth down. This time he'll hand it off. And Jenkins oh, is stopped. Lost yardage. Tui Molowal, the first contact. What a great play by Uwe Ungalale. Watch him get in here, get into the backfield, and slow Judkins down. And then they're able to finish him off. What a short yardage play. Now it's fourth and even longer. Fourth down and two. Howard kept on the first fourth down. Three in the backfield. Same play as the touchdown. And Judkins is going to wiggle free for the first down. Same side, same player, same result. Yep, same lead blocker, two guard. And you know, we said they're lightning and lightning, and they're also thunder and thunder. This is a get your nose dirty, get in here and run behind your pads and fight for extra yardage and get the first down. It's not flashy, but it's effective. And a new set of downs for the Buckeyes. So two for two now on fourth down for Ohio State. Did it on the first drive. It resulted in a touchdown. Can they cash in here? And a timeout called by Oregon. Place where Chip Kelly had great success as a head coach. Really took this program to a new level and revolutionized the game in a lot of ways. I had a great time visiting with him on Wednesday, and he told me about a system he uses with his quarterbacks called CLC, Cognitive Linguistic Coding. I'll explain that after this play. It was pretty fascinating. Hand off Abuka on first down, using his blocking and spun down for six. He talks about being able to use the communication system to talk to his quarterbacks. And he talks to the quarterbacks and says, how can I help you? What words, what phrases, what alerts, what checks can I give you? I don't want to give you a lot of long sentences. I want to give you short bursts of words and code words to help you at the line of scrimmage. And it's different for each quarterback. He actually said he got an appreciation for that doing TV when he was out of coaching and trying to do studio and fit all these thoughts he had into a little 20 second sound bite. We appreciate the shout out Chip. Second down and three Judkins first down. Well this is a relationship with Chip Kelly and Ryan Day that goes back I mean all the way until Ryan Day's youth before he even got to college they knew each other from that same area in New Hampshire he played from at New Hampshire and then Eagles quarterback coach Niners quarterback coach in back to back years in the NFL it's a role reversal freaky Friday of yeah. sorts where now one's the head coach the other the offensive coordinator but it's a relationship that continues to grow and has been really beneficial for both yeah yeah it's a very unique relationship and I think it's working really well for Ohio State. A book of the motion man on first down. Play action for Howard. Steps into it and will swing it to Judkins. Sheds a tackle. Spins and is dragged forward by Savage to the 15. Again, nice decision by Will Howard. They've got deep routes going down the field. There's pressure coming. There's a free rusher coming. And he has to get rid of the football. It's Brandon Johnson, number three, in his face. He gets rid of it to his outlet receiver, Judkins, who adds a couple extra after the catch. Howard rifles. <laughs> he he was looking. <laughs> he <laughs> just just throw it up to him and yeah. see what happens. He has a, a knack for holding a defender off with his left hand and reaching up with his right hand and making one hand to catches. Good coverage. He gave it a shot. He's been successful at that the last two weeks. And that time it was incomplete. Jeremiah Smith a big reason for this success 23 touchdowns on 24 trips into the red zone they have scored on all 24 of those trips and two rushing touchdowns tonight to pad the stats under four to play in this first half it's Howard looking sideline open a Buka touchdown perfectly delivered and a Buka right there again for the Buckeyes he had two guys wide open on this play a real mix up in coverage for Oregon. He had the tight end G. Scott. 
wide open as well, right in the middle of the field. And Abuka, who had three touchdowns a week ago, just goes unaccounted for on a little out and up. Safety was late, way late, getting over there. But watch, Will Howard could have had this right here as well. Wide open in the middle of the field. But he knows what he's got with Emeka Abuka. And they connect for a touchdown. Fielding's extra point makes it 21-15. Sixth receiving touchdown of the season. Four of them have come in the last two games for Emeka Abuka. Now 20 in what has been an illustrious career in Columbus. Yeah, beautiful throw, great read. Remember, it was set up by the dump down to Judkins. You know, not taking a negative play. He also avoided a sack earlier in this drive. And then he finds a guy he has great trust in. Emeka Abuka is a great receiver. I mean, he's going to be an NFL receiver, but he does a lot of the dirty work for this offense, too. He's a great blocker. He's tough. He's physical. Last year, he played through injuries almost the entire season. Didn't have the production that he had the year before, but he's off to another great start this season. Ryan Day mentioned exactly what you said, the dirty work and specifically the blocking. He actually says that Abuka gets more excited when he springs a play free with an elite block than he does when he scores a touchdown like we just saw. Yeah. I bet he likes scoring touchdowns too, though. I mean, that's, that's nice. pretty fun. It's a nice cherry on top. <laughs> this has become wide receiver U, and it's hard to argue in the last five years what they've done in the NFL. Paris Campbell, a second round pick. Terry McLaurin, a third round pick and then the string of first rounders Wilson Olave Smith and Jigba and Harrison in three consecutive drafts they have produced four first round receivers and that's the other thing Ryan Day told us this week is that guys like Emeka Abuka they care about now passing it down to that yes. next generation the Jeremiah Smiths and beyond the Carnell Tates who they believe is going to be an outstanding yeah. NFL player himself and Abuka has really carried that this year in particular yeah. as a captain of this team and it all starts with the wide receiver coach Brian Hartline that's that's the guy that gets them all there to begin with nice run James first down this kid's run well today. It's his ninth carry. Over 50 yards. And there's a discrepancy on the spot as to whether or not this is going to be second down in inches, and it looks like it will be. So they'll get quick, run it. James, this time, no doubt. So a lot of time. Dylan Gabriel has to be very smart with the football here. It's a one score game. They're in fine shape. Can't get greedy. You know, he's had three interceptions this year. They have all come in the last two weeks and all in the red zone. And he even told us he, he, he took full responsibility. He says, my eyes were bigger than my stomach and I, I forced it. And I didn't, you know, make the right decision. Even a guy in his sixth year can be prone to make bad decisions. Just keep it on the ground. And right now it's chewing up yards across the 45 to the 46. I think part of this is Dan Lanning does not want to give Ohio State the football back either. Right. Oregon won the toss and deferred. So they want a nice long drive here. Sure they want points but they really don't want to give up any more points right before the first half ends. They've got one timeout to work with in the two minute timeout. Ohio State with all three. Johnson in motion. Second and four, James, powerful runner. First down, doesn't matter if the contact comes, he is gonna punish you and drag you along. Yeah, and now's a good time to go play action and take a shot because James is asserting himself. They've got the first down. Still gotta find a way to get Tez Johnson involved. He's too good of a player and too important to this offense. Here he is right here, number 15 in the slot. And I don't think they're going to run this play. They'll take it to the two-minute timeout in a six-point ball game. Oregon will get the gain in these numbers courtesy of PFF. Tez Johnson is the third highest targeted rated receiver in Power Four conferences. And right now, he only has one catch in this game. Now, Evan Stort has five catches for 124 yeah. in the touchdown. But it feels like Johnson needs to get involved. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's too valuable to this team and too has too much ability to make big plays. The other guy, Terrence Ferguson, the tight end, only one catch for three yards as well. Jordan James got them into Ohio State territory, but now it's Whittington on the field. And they hand it to him. Oh, Whittington will pick up a yard. Ran into the brick wall that was Tyleek Williams. 
Now, Tyleek Williams is one of those guys we talked about at Ohio State that could have gone to the NFL, decided to come back. He's an outstanding player, very athletic, very twitchy for a big man inside. Two defensive tackles are outstanding for this defense. Johnson in motion on second and nine. They will throw it. Gabriel, quick. Ferguson just not in the right area and incomplete. That stops the clock now with a minute 25. Now usually these two, they're great friends. They spend a lot of time together off the field, and they're usually totally in sync. They were not in sync on this play. Makes it third down and nine. Some miscommunication from Ohio State defensively. Gabriel looking to take advantage with a deep ball. Again, separation. Johnson in the bucket. Touchdown. 48 yards. It's test time at Alton Stadium. They've already missed an extra point on a bad snap, but this time Sappington has no issues and gets the number three team in the country back in front. They've tried to get Tez Johnson loose. They put him in motion. They've shifted him. This time they put him in the bunch, and here he is at the point of attack of the bunch, and he's going to run a beautiful route on Denzel Burke. The quickness. He has both quickness to get separation and then top-end speed to run away from people. Very unique skill set, and they finally get him loose for a big play. That's two times now Denzel Burke, the best cover guy, a, a high NFL draft pick for this Ohio State defense, has been beaten on deep routes, kind of biting on the little stutter step move earlier against Stewart. That time got fooled by the quickness and escapability as Tev jo of Tez Johnson. Gabriel and Johnson have formed a quick bond on and off the field. Tez was Bo Nix's guy's adopted brother. Yeah. They spent so much time together, living together in high school, running routes in the backyard. But in comes Gabriel, and you, you always wonder, okay, what does that look like now from a guy you were so comfortable with that you're literally related to, to a guy that you've literally never met yeah. coming into the season? And a lot of it falls on the two of them taking the time together off the field. They have built it. And they both have nothing but great things to say about the vibe that each one brings to the offense. As this one will be another touchback, and we go downstairs to KT. Yeah, guys, more on that. Johnson was adopted at age 4, 15, and he told us at that time he was just a kid doing his own thing, growing up in subsidized housing in Pinson, Alabama. He said when he walked into the Knicks house for the first time, he immediately noticed their lives were far more structured. He said when Bo had all the attention on him in high school, I was in his shadows. I was watching every move, seeing how it would one day benefit me, and he certainly learned from one of the best, and we're seeing the results of that here tonight, guys. I love the story about how they they would go into the backyard and Bo would just throw him route after route after route and you go what is this all about I don't know why we're doing this and then the next game he had 17 catches and he goes oh this must be working <laughs> well a lot of time still here for Will Howard and Ohio State they have all three timeouts in a minute 17 Howard to throw to the side and it is caught on the comeback by Smith box still going though yeah. Chip Kelly and Ryan Day have absolute trust in their quarterback, Will Howard, in a situation like this. Howard rifles. It's Smith again, and this time it will be a yard shy out of bounds as Reed applied some contact. Well, you can run the football here if you want. I mean, you've got the timeouts. You're under a minute, but it's critical that you get the first down here. It will be a run. Henderson. Not there. Uwe Ungalale having a day. Fourth down. Well, it started with Harmon. 
Harmon got into the backfield with penetration and forced Henderson to change his course. Watch Harmon get into the backfield and force Henderson to bounce it outside. And then Ui Ungalale was there. You know, Derek Harmon transferred from Michigan State. He's familiar with playing against Ohio State. They're familiar with him. He played great last week against his old school, and he's having a heck of a day today without his sidekick, Jordan Birch, there lined up next to him. Harmon coming off a career year last year. There is Birch, who's out of this game after sustaining an injury in practice on Thursday. Their leader coming in in sacks, tackles for losses, and fumble recoveries. Coming up on the Xfinity Halftime Report, number one, Texas, dominant in the Red River rivalry. Top 10 teams surviving around the country. There will be one top 10 team here and a top five team that will fall in a surprise 6-0 team, a couple of them in power conferences. Well, Ohio State electing to punt. Now they've got to be disciplined in their coverage. There's only one team in the Big Ten that's had a return for a touchdown. That's Oregon. They have a punt return and a kickoff return, both against Boise State. No other team in the conference has a return for a touchdown. Tez Johnson scored the touchdown on the reception. This time we'll try to do something as he'll call for the fair catch at the 30. And Oregon will have it with 44 seconds, no timeouts. Again, they get the football to yeah. start the second half. Yeah, I think you're very conservative here. I mean, you've got the lead. You fought your way back into the lead. You're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. Because you have no timeouts, I think you run the football here. Now, Ohio State, they may try to use their timeouts, but... I would trust Jordan James a little bit to get some yards here. 12 carries, 67 yards, and a touchdown here in the first half. Saw a similar situation with Iowa earlier today against Washington where they ran on first down, and Caleb Johnson got it all the way within field goal range within one play. We're going to go to the air. Gabriel in the pocket steps up and will wisely run it himself, sliding down after a pickup of four. Yeah, got some positive yardage. We talked about Will Howard being a good runner. Dylan Gabriel is a good runner as well. He doesn't run as much, and he doesn't do as much design quarterback run, but he's got escapability. Gabriel incomplete, and now the clock stops with 17 seconds. That's two throws now in his last couple that we've seen Dylan Gabriel a little bit off. Again, coming into the game, highest completion percentage in college football. We saw a misfire to his tight end Ferguson, and that time, very simple throw to the back out of the backfield, just not in the right spot with the ball. So now it's third down and eight. And with the clock stopped, let's see what Oregon decides to do. James would have had the first down had he got the catch. And this one will be caught by Ferguson, and he's chopped down on a nice play by Lathan Ransom. Tui Molowau was the one who applied the pressure on Gabriel. Ohio State, so Ohio State will take its first. Yeah. So 12 seconds now to work with, and Oregon's going to have to send it away. Just with everything that's already happened in this first half. Yeah, right. With the pseudo onside kick, a couple miss extra point opportunities. The interception that never was. Yeah. Here you are with 12 seconds left, and the last thing you need if you're Oregon finally with the lead is yeah. more chaos. Well, so it starts with a good snap and solid protection. You got to get the kick out of there and get it off, and then coverage. So Brandon Innes will be back for this punt from Ross James. And this has only returned one so far this season. More shifting. Get it away cleanly. Fair catch called and made at the 20 with six seconds on the clock. A 45-yard punt. So Will Howard and company will come back on. We'll see if they try to maybe run the ball or just take the knee. 
But Tez Johnson comes alive with a big touchdown catch of 48 yards towards the end of this first half. Evan Stewart with 124. Remember, Treshawn Holden is done for the rest of the day. And Howard will take the knee and send us to that one to where it is. The quarterback comparison, they've been similar all year. They were similar in that first half. Two total touchdowns with a rush for Howard. Two touchdowns through the air for Gabriel with 213 yards. And now as the sun sets here in Eugene, we are set for what should be an outstanding finish in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, it really should be. I mean, uh, <laughs> we had a lot of drama, a lot of crazy stuff in the first half. And we got a one-point ball game with 30 minutes left. All you can ask for in this Big Ten showdown on Big Ten Saturday night. Fielding will send it away. Whittington waiting back to start this second half. And he will let it sail into the end zone as we check in with KT. Well, Ryan Day was very brief with his answers at halftime. I asked him with Oregon getting the ball here to start the third, what do you need to do to slow down this aggressive offense that we're seeing from them? And he said, yeah, it's been too many X plays. We have to fight harder. Regarding the unexpected plays that Oregon is presenting, Coach Day said there is nothing that we didn't expect, guys. Both teams said that they expected the unexpected coming in. I'm yeah. still not sure that they could have really yeah. knew what we were going to see in the first two quarters. Well, and just to clarify, those X plays that Ryan Day mentioned are explosive plays. Too many explosive pass plays. Oregon with five explosive plays in the first half. Ohio State four. Now it's an Ohio State defense that has been stiflingly good in the second half this season. Jordan James on the first down carry gets back to the line of scrimmage. You just look at what they've done by the numbers in the second half and even overall this season they've already allowed the most points that they have in a game this yeah. year. They're only allowing 6.8 but they've only allowed 10 total in the second half this season. Yeah back in week three they gave up some yards and points in the first half to Marshall and ever since then they have been on lockdown in the second half. Gabriel and that one's a little bit behind Tez Johnson with that tight coverage from Jordan Hancock and right away now it's third and ten and a chance to get a three and out and gain some momentum and give the ball back to your offense again this is not a heavy blitz team I don't think they blitzed in that first half Dylan Gabriel had protection he had time he was able to launch the ball downfield interesting to see if Jim Knowles decides to maybe come after him with a little extra heat in the second half. Gabriel steps up, delivers, open, Stewart again. First down Oregon on a big connection between Gabriel and Stewart. Well, excellent protection, and then here's the bunch formation again. Stewart comes out of it and is able to get the football, but it started with protection. Dylan Gabriel is able to step up into the pocket and make the throw. Four-man rush, no problem for Dylan Gabriel. Hand off, and James tried to burst through that hole. We'll pick up two. For a guy who's not that big, Todd, and Dylan Gabriel, just feels like he can manipulate the yeah. pocket exactly the way he needs to find the lane. Yeah, he has to. I mean, because he can't see over the offense and defensive line or those arms and bodies in there the way that Will Howard can. So he has to kind of move and create some openings for him. But when he has an opening, he throws as nice of a ball, as catchable of a pass with accuracy as there is in college football. Completing 78% of his passes coming in. He's 12 of 18 here tonight. Johnson, the motion man, delayed. And they'll just get rid of it over the head of Johnson and incomplete on the tight pressure coming in to Imola. Yeah, good play that time by Dylan Gabriel because this is going to be a sack or a negative yardage play. JT's right here. Watch how quickly he gets into the backfield going to blow the play up and Dylan Gabriel says look the defense won there let me throw it away and have third and more reasonable to work with here it'll be third down and eight and here comes another check from the line of scrimmage now Ohio State showing pressure they showed it the last third down but didn't bring it this time I think they're coming here they come Gabriel evades weaving Gabriel extending down he goes. The pursuit from Caden Curry finally catches up to Gabriel. It's fourth down. Yeah, the pressure came this time from Sonny Styles. Jim Knowles says we're going to bring pressure. Here's Styles coming from the outside, unblocked. They're unable to get him, and Gabriel does everything he can to elude the pressure, but they chase him down and force the punt. 
First time Jim Knowles has said, let's go after Dylan Gabriel, and it paid off on that third down play. See if Ross James can pin this Ohio State offense deep. Innes is back. And he'll let this one bounce right near the 20. Is where refrain from making the worst dad joke of all time about being over the moon about <laughs> anything. But I will tell you that so far this game has delivered on yeah. exactly what we thought it'd be. Yeah, it has been. It had a little bit of everything. And uh, we should have a great second half, a great finish to this game. You know, the one thing that still kind of sticks in the back of my mind, some special teams miscues by Oregon. Not necessarily a factor right now, but before this night's over, it could come back to, to be a problem. Missed field goal, missed extra point on a botch snap, and a missed two-point conversion, and here they are up by one. Now back to the defensive end. Scott in motion, and the handoff goes to Judkins. He'll pick up three. Easy, guys. Well, Judkins and Henderson. Just both so dangerous. Judkins has been a little bit more involved in the passing game. In fact, he's the leading receiver with 38 yards for Ohio State so far. That seems kind of crazy, right, with Jeremiah Smith, who's been relatively quiet. Emeka Abuka has the touchdown, but not a lot of yards. Shabola is back in there at right guard, which is a good sign for this Ohio State offensive line. Howard on play action, feeling the pressure, hit as he throws. Oh, Jeremiah Smith tracking it the entire way. Yeah, he gets separation quickly, and the ball's underthrown. He beats Jabbar Muhammad. The ball's underthrown, but he does a great job of coming back for it and using that strong body to secure the catch. Judkins to the 35. Toughness on both ends of this big play for Ohio State. Yeah, Will Howard under duress, lets go of the football, gets hit right as he throws it. Maybe not able to get everything on it. But then again, the strength and ball skills of Jeremiah Smith for his big first first big catch of the ball game. And you're saying he's been quiet. He's still five catches for 57 yards as a true freshman in this top three matchup. Second down and six. Pump. Howard fires open. Scott got it to the 10. Now oh, this is beautiful. Watch. They're going to fake a screen here and send him deep. The tight end is going to then release and they show screen and then come back to the middle of the field. The whole defense of Oregon reacted outside and left the middle of the field open. Beautiful call by Chip Kelly right there. For the big first down and what a game for G Scott who's not necessarily a go-to target but he's had a couple big plays already for Ohio State first and goal Howard Abuka looking to make something happen and he'll be ushered out of bounds at the six by Nico Reed it's well played by Nico Reed he comes from the middle of the field has a long way to run and takes the perfect angle to stop Abuka short of the goal line. Will Howard, efficient day, 15 of 18. I mean, he's completing 72% of his passes coming into this one, knocking on the door of a 200-yard game. Abuka in motion on second and goal. Howard steps up. Howard. It's caught. Jeremiah Smith. Touchdown, Ohio State. The legend grows. Well, Jeremiah Smith gets the touchdown, but this play is all Will Howard. I mean, he has to extend the play. It's not open to his left. He comes back to middle, still not open. Now, extend the play, but keep my eyes downfield. And Jeremiah Smith just kept crossing the field into Will Howard's vision. And Howard hit him with the touchdown. But his ability to extend the play, huge that time by Will Howard. Extra point by Fielding makes it by a number of veterans. And now the, uh, to say promising would almost feel like yeah. an understatement, yeah. but youngster in Jeremiah Smith. Yeah, he's already fulfilled the promise. I mean, he showed up day one ready to plug and play. 
was winning the weight room drills as a freshman with seniors around him right when he got to campus. Fielding will send it away. Whittington, who is capable as a returner, will wait for it and let it sail. Jeremiah Smith, uh, say the legend, and it almost feels like that's what's brewing now with each week. You just look at the names on the list, and he's one behind Chris yeah. Carter for that true freshman record. Well, and it was his physical and emotional and mental maturity that he showed when he first got here. It, it was kind of marveling to all of the coaches how far along he was, how fundamentally he sound he was, and that's a credit to his dad, Chris Smith. Just a fascinating article that we read this week about what his dad and a couple of his childhood friends did to start training Jeremiah when he was eight or nine years old and how it has paid off. Quick to Johnson and the speedster gets it to the 29. Well his cousin Geno Smith who everybody knows for the Seattle Seahawks mentioned that he thinks he's going to be the greatest wide receiver ever. Yeah. Not Ohio State period. And it off to the tight end Kenyon Sadiq will just disappear into that pile and picks up a yard. Gino is in attendance. They played Thursday night, obviously not far from Eugene, yeah. just a couple hours away, and some love between the fam. Yeah, I talked to Gino a little bit before the game, and I, I asked him about Jeremiah. He says, you know, look, I'm just here as a fan tonight, but the kid works so hard, and he's so determined to be great, and uh, it's been fun to watch. So now here's a big third down and five. Ohio State's defense got that initial stop on the first drive of this second half. And Oregon looking for the response. Showing pressure again. This time they back out. Three-man rush, drop eight. And he just finds the open man. It's Tez Johnson for the first down. Yeah, good read by Dylan Grant. Great, great route by Tez. Watch him know it's zone and sit right down. He doesn't keep running into the corner, Igbenosin. He knows it's zone, and so he sits down and gives his quarterback a target. Gabriel just extends it. Oh, Ferguson dropped it, and the flag is down. Well, there's linemen have to be downfield. I mean, Dylan Gabriel held the ball way too long, didn't get rid of it, should have run. And once he threw the ball across the line of scrimmage, there were, there were linemen clearly further than three yards down the field. Here from Larry Smith. A noticeable player downfield. Offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty, first down. The shot, Struther. Yeah, you can't hardly blame them. I mean, they're they're going run fade. They're running. It's kind of an RPO, and Dylan Gabriel Correct. pulled it out. Ohio State's decided to decline that foul. Huh. Second down. So they'll live with second down and 10, as opposed to first and 15. Trusting this Buckeye defense that has been nearly impenetrable before tonight. Gabriel feeling it, lets it go, and it's complete to Justice Lowe, who is replacing Treshawn Holden, who got ejected in that second quarter. He breaks the tackle of Burke and sets up third down and one. Yeah, good effort by Lowe to just kind of break that tackle and, and make it a very makeable third down situation. Ohio State choosing to decline the penalty and play second and ten. And now they're faced with third and one. Curious about the play calling here on third and one. You're nearing midfield. Every possession feels like it's going to matter so much in this game. Yeah. And, and you Oregon, don't have that big quarterback like Ohio State. Right. And Oregon has yet to go for a fourth down play. And they do throw it. And they're looking deep on the sideline. Some contact and a flag. The flag. Yep. Igbenosin was there and grabbed. It'll be a first down for Oregon. Yeah, Igbenosin knew he, he knew he was beat right away and did the instinctive thing, reaching out and grabbing and not giving up a touchdown. Kind of concede the penalty, but not give a touchdown. See, he's beat right now, and both hands around the waist. Easy call. And he's just thinking, look, if I don't do that, it's going to be a touchdown maybe. Kenyon Sadiq came in on the motion. The tight end had the step. You know, Will Stein told us about his two tight ends. He thought Terrence They're Ferguson. By both teams on the play. Oh. Uh oh. Number 15 was covered up, went downfield, the notable receiver. Pass interference, defense. Those penalties were all set. Third down. Wow. 
Tez Johnson can't believe it. Where is he? Well, this has got to be him right here, isn't it? I don't know where he is. That's number 14. Oh, wait a minute. No, he, he says he wasn't even on the field, so it must have been a different number, not 15. He's on the field now, but I don't know that he was on that play. I don't know. So all of it offsets, and it's now third down and one once again. Johnson, the motion man. This time, handoff. James got the push, shoved back, and he's short. Ohio State builds the wall with Simon and Hamilton, and it's a decision for Dan Lanning. Known for his willingness to be aggressive at times on fourth and short yeah. in the past. Well, and again, you don't have as big of a quarterback to run quarterback sneak, and the strength of this Ohio State defense is the two defensive tackles that will be lined up right over the ball, those two guys, 58 and 91. Play clock already down to 15. They haven't broken the huddle yet. And they're going to settle out of the gun on fourth and inches. Play clock down to five. Gabriel keeps wide open. Ferguson trying to shed Burke, and he does. Ferguson pinballs to the 20. Creative for 31 yards. Yeah, great job by Gabriel gaining some ground because Jordan Hancock, number seven, is going to come free. And he just kind of drifts away from him, and Ferguson is able to slip out. Now, Denzel Burke is a heck of a football player, but he's having a rough night. I mean, they are going after him for some big plays. That one huge on fourth down. Keeps the drive alive. Under six to play in this third quarter. Handoff, James. Got away from the initial surge and picks up a yard and a half. Will Howard waiting for his next opportunity. Jordan James now 16 carries, 71 yards in the touchdown. Got going, got loose early in this game in the first quarter, but it's been relatively quiet on the yeah. ground since for Oregon. James on second and eight. This time he finds the space, and he's got the first down out of bounds. First and goal. Just needed you to inspire him, I guess, huh? <laughs> well, they run where they like to run, behind their left tackle. He's their best offensive lineman, Josh Connerly Jr. Does a nice job of clearing space. Blocking on Mitchell Melton. Discover pylon can shows the end of the run, and first and goal now for the, for the Ducks. Both teams stressed red zone efficiency. Three scores so far, but would love to get the touchdown to get back in front. Gabriel batted down. Caleb Downs. Now, again, this is one of the problems with being a shorter quarterback. Just not able to throw over the top of Downs. Downs, a very smart player. Knows he can't get home on the rush. Just kind of stops short of the block and times his jump and gets hands on the football. It's a tough place to be first and goal on the nine. It's, yeah. it's maybe the toughest spot on the field because everything is shrunk in the red zone and you can't get another first down without scoring. Ferguson in motion on second and goal. James jump cut and he brings it all the way to the two. Well, again, the tackle, beautiful pull that time. This is a little power football. They pull the backside tackle. And James showing that power running. Scored the first touchdown for Oregon. And the two through the air, Gabriel to Stewart and Johnson. What do they have here on third down and goal? And they get the jumbo in there with Grace as the fullback. Tyleek Williams on the bench for Ohio State. Play action. Float it. Incomplete. Looking for Patrick Herbert in the end zone. It's fourth and goal. Well, they tried to just kind of go show block on JT Tuimoluau, 
but his quickness was still able to get to Dylan Gabriel. Herbert didn't take very much steam away from him, and it was hard for Gabriel to set his feet and make an accurate throw. And it looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field. How much do you trust your defense? I guess more than you trust your kicker right here. <laughs> Johnson in motion on fourth down. They will run it. Gabriel surveys. Gabriel throws and hits the back of Cody Simon. Incomplete. Ohio State with a red zone stop. It's over right there. You know, it looked like he could have run. It was just zone coverage. They had everything covered up. He tried to force one into Herbert. No can do, says Ohio State's defense. JC, there's some top 10 teams currently in action. Two top five teams here in a battle. And now Ohio State would have to go for their longest drive of the season to extend this lead by a couple of touchdowns. Henderson on first down, and he'll provide some breathing room to the five. Well, the pressure now on this Oregon defense and their offense let a golden opportunity go by the wayside there. Great chance to score and take the lead again. And now they got to hope they can get a three and out from their defense with Ohio State backed up in their own territory. Here comes the rush. And Howard just stays in there, delivers a bullet right to Abuka for a first down. Picks up 15. Oregon bringing pressure. It's man free. And there's a safety that's going to come over the top to help. But the ball is perfectly thrown on time. And Abuka able to make the catch on the slant and get the first down. Five catches, the 36 yards, and the touchdown for Abuka. Jeremiah Smith, 6 for 63 of the touchdown on the last possession. And Howard now up at 215. Looks like straight man without a free safety. Henderson run. Ohio State choosing to run, but Oregon really selling out for the run on that play. Devin Jackson came in to make the tackle. Four more yards for Henderson. Will Howard has done a really nice job in this ball game of distributing the football. Of course, Jeremiah Smith and Abuka, but both tight ends, G. Scott Jr. and Kazmarek have a catch, a couple catches. Judkins with two catches. Taking what the defense gives you, knowing you've got a lot of guys that can make plays. Fast moving third quarter after. A slugfest in the first half. Henderson, patient, runs into a host, including Uyunglele. So third down coming up here, a third and three. You know, and this is where Oregon really, really misses Jordan Birch, right? Their best pass rusher can't be blocked one-on-one. -on -one. You've got to account for him. And he's in street clothes on the sideline and on critical third down plays like this. Derek Harmon has stepped up on the interior in his place. This one a third and three. Howard trouble with a snap. He just has to jump on it. Oregon gets a gift and it's fourth down. It's a good snap. Will Howard just mishandles it. Maybe his eyes are looking downfield confirming coverage. But he just is not able to field the snap and does the right thing of covering it up. You don't want to turn over here in your own territory. But you're right, Noah, a true gift for Oregon. Similar to the Harmon rip away and the fumble in the first quarter, maybe can ignite this crowd once again in this second half. McGuire to boot it away. Johnson back to receive. Calls for the fair catch, brings it in at the 40 in a 43-yard punt. 11 seconds to play in this third quarter, and Oregon will get the football back. Yeah, on Ohio State's last goal line stand, this is fourth down. Now, this is Tez, right? They're going to bring him in motion and run a little mesh concept here, and Tez is going to be open. But for whatever reason, Dylan Gabriel comes off of him too fast. 
He doesn't think it's open. His head, his head and eyes go away from it. Tez is still open. He was open from the beginning, as you see on the Discover Pylon cam. He's still open. Dylan Gabriel went off of him too soon. And Oregon let a scoring opportunity go by the wayside. And it could have been a very easy go-ahead touchdown. They've had the missed opportunities, as you mentioned, on some special teams blunders. And then there on the goal line opportunity. Oh, what a catch by Johnson. Tez turns it upfield, loses the ball at the end. Will they call him down? And they will. Picks up nine in the final play of this ode to Animal House, which was filmed right on this campus in Eugene. A great look at our aerial coverage brought to you by Ford, but they play that before the fourth quarter of every home game at Autzen Stadium. And I'll tell you what, Autzen Stadium, in terms of environment, has delivered. The fans have done their part, and now Jordan James looking to do the same. Brings it to the 35. Well, they got the nice acrobatic catch by Tez Johnson right before the end of the quarter. And now a nice run straight up the inside by Jordan James. And Oregon with another good drive here in Ohio State territory. Up over 100 yards. So Ohio State had not given up a 100-yard rusher or receiver coming into this game. They've given up both. James with 103 on the ground. Stort with 141 through the air. Play action for Gabriel. Good blitz pickup by James. Wow, you're and not it's Stort kidding. once again. I mean, that was serious blitz pickup. Watch Jordan James just stick his nose right in there on the blitzing safety ransom. And that is the way it's done. Give your quarterback an extra half a second to get rid of the ball. James, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Meanwhile, Dylan Gabriel with that last completion at 301 yards, the second 300-yard game of the season. So now here's a critical third and short once again for this Oregon offense. They're four of 11 on third down. They've had the better of it on third down. Ohio State only one of six, but Ohio State has been better on fourth down so far in the first three quarters. Ferguson and Herbert in there. Now Ferguson will split out wide from the tight end spot. Gabriel keeps plenty of space, and he's still going. Gabriel makes a move. He's gone. 27 yards. Touchdown, Ducks. We have not seen Dylan Gabriel run by design or any quarterback pulls much today. That one was perfect at the perfect time. So after Sappington struggled with some of the extra points, they bring on Andrew Boyle, who had that squib kick turn onside kick. And he makes it 29-28. Oregon back in front. JT here in Eugene. One thing Ryan Day told us. Especially in an environment like this, he said, all I want is our team to get this to the fourth quarter and steal it from yep. there. And he's got that chance. Well, and one interesting point, whether it means a lot or not, Ohio State has not been in a close ball game this year. Oregon has. A three-point win over Boise State right here on the last second field goal. Dylan Gabriel said he hoped that that would be in an advantageous area for this team and right now it looks like it this is JT to Imolo now when the tight end releases Styles goes with them JT's got to be responsible for the quarterback but he gets greedy and goes after the back and he loses contain on the quarterback and Dylan Gabriel for the first time today pulls it and scores and now Terrence Ferguson watch his block at the end of the play on Ingbenosen and Dylan Gabriel just kind of plays right off of that block and gets the go-ahead touchdown JT has got to be aware of the quarterback and before he goes after that ball carry has to make sure the quarterback doesn't have the football in his hands. Full house in the backfield and they still hand it off. Judkins loses a yard. Devin Jackson. Well, again, this is when you lean hard on a veteran quarterback who has played a bunch of football and played in a lot of big games and played in hostile environments like Will Howard. He's 17 of 20 throwing the football, 215 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. 
He's run the ball at times, and he is a field general in charge of this right now for the Buckeyes. Right now, Jeremiah Smith all alone at the top. Howard's going to keep it himself. And he gets wrestled down at the 30. When we saw this Ohio State team last year in a game like this on the road at Notre Dame that went into the fourth quarter and his team found a way to gut it out and make a win scoring very late in that ball game. Similar situation for the 2024 Buckeyes right now. Third down and four. Howard, Abuka, what a route, first down. Yeah, and he popped back up. I mean, he and John, uh, Jeremiah Smith kind of got tangled up, and Abuka actually falls down. Watch, you're going to bring him in motion, get him behind Jeremiah Smith, and they get tangled up, and he actually kind of slips, but is able to keep his balance and get back outside for the catch. They have been attacking Brandon Johnson a number of times through this game. And it's the motion man. Fake it to him. Howard got away from the first. Oh, a dangerous throw is incomplete in the direction of Smith. Well, again, you see the strength of Will Howard, right? There's a rusher there. He's able to kind of shrug it off. A lot of movement in the backfield. And it's Harmon again who's not able to get the quarterback on the ground, but almost picked off. Discover pylon cam shows you how close this ball was to being intercepted on the sideline. Oregon has not generated a ton of takeaways. They did have the fumble recovery in the first half, but only five coming into this ball game. Henderson to the outside and out of bounds. Another big third down play coming up. Abuka was the guy the last time. Ohio State two of seven on third down. Buka is in the slot, and Smith is down here at the bottom, right on that zero of 40. Howard looking for Smith. He's got him wide open. Jeremiah Smith, sure-handed, and a big pickup for a first down. Yeah, right in the spot between the corner and the safety. Excellent route by Jeremiah Smith, and then he goes up and high points it before the safety can come over to make a play on the ball. Good timing by Will Howard. If he waits any longer, that safety's there to make a play. Second big third down conversion. Will Howard throwing the football on target. Smith and Henderson, the standouts once again. Henderson now up to 90 yards. As Judkins is back out there for first down. Movement, movement by Ohio State. Ball start, offense, number 65, five-yard penalty, first down. It's one of the backups that had to come in, Zen Mahalski. You can see him just kind of lured, lunged forward in his stance. It's a big ask for Mahalski coming in for their best offensive lineman, Josh Simmons, who went out with the injury on the road against the number three team in the country. With Simmons, you got carted off. Play action now for Howard. To the side, Abuka spins away to the 40. I mean, that, that's just such a good play. It's first and 15. You don't get greedy. You get at least half of that yardage back. You put yourself back on schedule. Second and seven. Just good decisions by Will Howard where to go with the football. Both quarterbacks have mentioned they've been on both ends of being down, being up, being on the road, being at home. They know what it feels like. They know what is required out of you in its critical moments in the fourth quarter. Play action, Smith. And that was put right in the spot for Smith to then take it across the sticks and move the chains.
It's just so hard if you're a defense. I mean, who do you try to take away? I mean, if you try to pay extra attention to Smith, then you've got a Buka. And if, if you try to just sell out for the pass and drop coverage, then you got to deal with Judkins and Travion Henderson and a quarterback who can run. They really put you in stressful situations every snap of the football. Howard, Abuka over the middle, first down. I got your ball. This is an RPO, so the, the line is blocking run. They're all blocking run. Judkins thinks it's a run, and Will Howard is reading this guy right here. As soon as he sees him come inside, he knows he can throw the slant right behind him to Abuka. The line and the running back think it's a running play, but the quarterback and wide receivers knows he has that option to pull it and throw it. Approaching the midway point of this fourth quarter. Ohio State knocking on the door again in the red zone, and another flag is down. Ball start. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty, first down. Chabola. Hurt earlier, back in the game, toughing it out, called for the penalty here. There it is, uh, the right guard, just early movement. Now they overcame it the last couple of downs, but here they are again at first and 15. Yardage about even, but three more penalties called against the Buckeyes. Howard surveys. Howard goes down, sandwiched in between two at the line of scrimmage, and it's the two sophomores, Tuioti and Uyunglele. Yeah, and they're playing a lot. They've had to play a lot of snaps, both of them tonight, in the absence of Jordan Birch. And they have played extremely well. Tosh Lapoy told me earlier in the week, he said, they have been outstanding. I'm really pleased with how well they've played for as young as they are, and they have stepped up again tonight. Second and 14. Howard on courts. Henderson the catch, but not much more after. Good defense by Oregon. Playing zone, keeping everything in front. Bringing up a third down and long situation here. Does Tosh LaPoy try to bring some pressure? The trouble with that is if you bring pressure, you leave yourself exposed to man-to-man -man coverage against two of the best in college football, and they're both out to the bottom of the screen. Smith outside, and Abuka in the slot. Doesn't look like a pressure look. Looks like a two-shell. Third and long. Howard short of Smith, incomplete. Haven't seen Will Howard miss too many throws. This one is short. Smith was open. Don't know if it would have been the first down or not, but it would have made for an easier field goal attempt. Instead, it's a 40-yarder for fielding. Hit from 40 earlier this season against Akron. Career-long 47. And this one from fielding is perfect. 10 receiver there, Jordan, making a play in the SEC. Meanwhile, we've seen a number of SEC transfers making plays in this game here. Six minutes to play, a look at our United Cam, and a two-point ball game between number two, Ohio State, number three, Oregon, here in Eugene. And Will Howard, 14 of his last 15 passes complete. Only that last one on third down is only bad throw. This will be another touchback for Oregon. Well, Oregon has had some missed opportunities in this two-point game. Remember back the botch snap and a missed extra point. So that put them behind to begin with. Then a missed field goal after a failed third down play. And then they felt like they needed to go for two. That came up short. And then, of course, Tez was wide open on a fourth down play and for whatever reason Dylan Gabriel didn't see him didn't go that way another failed opportunity a failed opportunity to get points and those points are looming large right now with a two-point ball game 
Whittington is in there instead of James on first down. Gabriel will throw instead, and he does find his running back. Whittington with a spin and gains five to the 30. A nice tackle by Styles there. Styles is a guy who started out as a safety, a super athletic guy. Dad was a great player. Moved to linebacker, and he's just kind of starting to figure it out at linebacker. Quick throw just past the outstretched arms of Tui Molowal, and Johnson is going to get close to that first down. We'll see where they mark him out. A really nice job by Evan Stewart, who's been the go-to receiver, getting a block. And this is just a quick decision. The numbers don't favor running the football. Let's spit it out and get it out to our best receiver outside for a first down. And they do give it to him. So Johnson's starting to find some of those stats. Six catches, 73 yards in the touchdown after the slow start to the game. Remember, no Treshawn Holden the rest of the way was ejected after the kerfuffle with Igbenosin as this one goes for three to Whittington. So five minutes to play now. Both teams with all three timeouts remaining and the two-minute timeout as well in this fourth quarter as Oregon looks to eat up as much as they possibly can. And Jordan James back in the game. He's not in the backfield. He's out wide as a wide receiver right now. Empty backfield to start. Here he comes back in now. Ferguson man-to-man -man on the top. James to the outside. And he'll get close to the 40. It'll set up third down and about six. And they had a good opportunity with Ferguson with inside position by Styles. Went with the run instead, bringing up third down. And a huge one at that. See if they get that same kind of coverage look for the big tight end. He's out wide. And this is Caleb Downs going out on him this time. Ferguson just three catches, 37 yards. Now they put him in motion on third down and six. Toss it. James blocking. James has got it. Oh, what a run. Again, excellent job by the left tackle, Josh Connerly. Watch this guy pull out and lead, and these two guys block inside. And then the nice cut at the end of the run by James to secure the first down. Good vision and good cut by James, an excellent blocking at the point of attack. And another fantastic day at the office. Gabriel. Rifles, caught, Ferguson, shakes free, inside the 30. 26 yards through the air to the tight end. Watch Cody Simon try to redirect him, but then he loses sight of him, and he cuts right underneath the safety ransom. The thing about this guy has a great feel for space. Gabriel just gets rid of it. Tez Johnson got one block and then goes down around the 24. And again, Ohio State very cautious about bringing pressure on Dylan Gabriel. And when he has time in the pocket, he is effective. Again, coming in the most Accurate passer in college football, 22 of 33 tonight, 339 yards, and has not faced a lot of heat from this Ohio State defense. Already into field goal range. How much more can they get? Here comes pressure now. Gabriel, well protected. Sideline, incomplete, but a flag. Stork had the step. Hancock with the coverage. Yeah, this is a mismatch, right? This is Stewart, who's having a huge game, running a slot fade on the nickelback. Pass interference. Defense, number seven. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. And he's grabbing him the whole way. He knows he's not in a good position. Evan Stewart has him beat. He's got his arm. He's got his jersey. And Oregon has a first down. And again, that same situation, first and goal on the nine. The last time they were here, they didn't get it done on fourth down. Whittington up the middle. Oh, still push. will push it forward to the five. And unless a timeout is taken, it'll take us to the 
two minute timeout. Old from the five time now for a look at the target QB comparison and two guys that came in with the idea that we are winning a national championship with this team. Will Howard has played well. Dylan Gabriel has played well. Both have accounted for three total touchdowns. And now it's Gabriel's turn to try to knock it in one more time and put his team back in front. A late substitution now by Jim Knowles. Three new players in anticipating run. So he brought an extra defensive lineman in anticipating run. Brought late Hero Canoe, number 93. So these are all big bodies inside. Whittington wiggles through to the one. And Ohio State will take timeout number one. Yeah, that's a tough run. Again, they tossed and ran behind Josh Connerly Jr., the left tackle. Ohio State had big bodies in there anticipating inside run and was a little toss out to the C gap. And Whittington almost got that thing into the end zone. So here you are, 155. You've got to run it again. You can't potentially stop the clock, can you? Here's the only thing I'll say about that. A, a touchdown is going to be much better than a field goal here, no right? Dylan Gabriel has played as much football as anybody in college football history. I don't mind trusting him with the ball on a little run pass option with the idea if it's not wide open, you run the football. Or they give it to Jordan James, but I would, I would be okay trusting Dylan Gabriel with the ball in his hands on this play. James is back in there. Gabriel has thrown three interceptions this year. All of them have come in the red zone. Third and goal. James swallowed up into the pile. There's another timeout by Ryan Day. Great goal line stand going on right here by Ohio State. Who can win the line of scrimmage? We said this at the very beginning of the telecast. Which team could be the most physical? JT Tuamalo getting penetration. Nowhere to go for Jordan James. So fourth and goal, Sappington, who made the game-winning kick. Week two against Boise State will have a chance to put his team in front with under two minutes to play. And you brought up that Notre Dame game last year for yep. Ohio State. It is eerily similar now. Yep. Should he make this kick with 151, slightly less than that, will be on the clock. You've got one timeout. But first, you've got to make this kick. And they've had their mishaps on the botch snap on the extra point. A missed field goal from 44 yards out. He has made from 27. And this one will be even shorter than that. The junior from Portland, Oregon State transfer. 19 yard attempt, Ross James, the holder. Luke Basso will snap it. And Sappington puts Oregon in front. Todd is a top three matchup. We've had seven lead changes yeah. for a one point game and a minute 47 to work with for Ohio State to go and try and win it. A lot of time, one time out, and again, you know, you know, both of these teams have played well enough to win the ball game tonight, with one exception the miscues of Oregon in their kicking game. Missed field goal, botched extra point, and a failed two point conversion. And that's why they're in this position right now with only a one point lead. And Ohio State with the ability to maybe win this game with a field goal. Sappington sends it. Touchback. So here comes Will Howard. Grad transfer, Kansas State has played in a Big 12 championship game, has played in big time bowl games, came in tied for the Big Ten lead with 16 total touchdowns, efficient on the day and on the season. This is why he came to Ohio State, right. to play in games like this, in environments like this, and now has a chance to be the hero. He has played a heck of a ball game so far tonight, and this is the most important drive of his entire football career right here. Smith and Abuka with eight catches apiece. Henderson has 90 yards on the ground. He's in there on first down. Howard. Downing goes. 
Uwe Ungalale was in his face, and Howard loses major yardage with the clock still rolling. I think he just fell down, too, Noah. He didn't get hit. I think he just lost his footing. Can't take that timeout yet. Second down and 14. Pressure comes. Howard feels it. Delivers. It's caught. Vacuumed in by Carnell Tate. Beautiful catch by Carnell Tate. Another big-time receiver did not play a week ago against Iowa, but gets him back into third and manageable now. Third and six for Howard. Sidestep. Got it. Abuka, another conversion. And a nice job by Abuka getting out of bounds after getting the first down. Great clock awareness, game awareness. Save that timeout. Oregon trying to create some pressure. Twists and stunts up front. Unable to get home and get to the quarterback. Final minute. Smith sheds a tackler and picks up nine. Second and short. They got a play called. Giving instruction at the line of scrimmage. 100 yards now for Jeremiah Smith. Howard on second down. It's a Buka in the bucket. Inside the 30 for the Buckeyes. Beautiful route. He beat Brandon Johnson. I think Oregon was thinking it was going to be a short throw just to try to get the conversion. They had a short throw outside, but from the slot, they had a seven route or a corner route. And it was a great route by Emeka Abuka and Will Howard on time and on target with the ball. You mentioned biggest drive for Will Howard. Well, one of the biggest games he's played in, he's played in a number of them, but just his second career 300-yard game here tonight. 34 seconds left. It's Howard again. Rifle, sideline. He was going up for another spectacular grab, but this time Smith well covered. Again, Oregon, without their best pass rusher, Jordan Birch, in this part of the ball game, when you could use him the most, unable to be a part because of the injury he suffered in practice this week. Birch watching from the sideline. Second and ten. Howard. Smith. Got separation, and a flag is down. May have been contact. Nico Reed was definitely pushed backward. Pass interference. Offense, number four. 15 yards for the previous spot. Second down. A freshman mistake. Uh, I mean, his strength got the best of him on that play. Created separation for himself, extended his arms. And this backs him up out of field goal range. Fielding's career long is 47 yards last year against Minnesota. It's now second and 25 with the clock rolling under 20 seconds. They only have one timeout. They got to get this off. Howard deep drop. Howard deep throw. A wobbler is incomplete. 10 seconds to play. Ryan Day's trying to figure out why the clock was running there. It stops now, obviously, for the incomplete pass. There was the offensive penalty. And I think Will Howard and the rest of the Ohio State people thought that, that with the penalty, the clock wouldn't be running, and they were taking their time. And now there's only 10 seconds left in the ball game. They've got to get it to around the 30 to feel comfortable about a field goal. Howard, third and 25, and this one's blown dead. Timeout, Oregon. First half will be 30 seconds in length. Please Ter reset the game clock to 10 seconds. Terry, tell us what happened with the clock there. Sure, it's a, it's a foul on a play that ended in bounds. So the clock starts and the referee's ready for play. Uh, the opponent of the team that fouled is ahead, so they don't. There's no option here. It right. just starts on the ready on, on this play throughout the game. 
Well, as experienced as Will Howard is as a transfer quarterback, it almost seems like he did not know that that's what was going to happen. And, Todd, I understand trying to save the timeout, but you yeah. almost have to take it at that point with as much time right. that came off the clock. If you know the clock is rolling, yeah, you have to take it. Ten seconds, third and 25. Fairly comfortable field goal would be at the 30, maybe 29-yard line, currently at the 43. Confusion defensively. It's Howard. Rifles. Incomplete. Jabbar Muhammad gets in front of Jeremiah Smith, but a flag is down. Illegal substitution. Defense has wow. 12 on defense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, you mentioned confusion. Yeah, they had confusion and too many guys on the field. And again, eerily similar <laughs> to the Notre Dame game where they didn't have enough guys on the field. Ryan Day knew it. But now there's still only six seconds left in the ball game. Got to get about 10 to 12 more yards, right? To feel comfortable. Yeah. You do have the timeout. So you can work that middle of the field. A lot of room down here at the bottom for Jeremiah Smith. Third and 20. Howard, a lot of time coming off. Howard's going to run for it. Time runs out, and that'll do it. Oh, my goodness. Welcome to the Big Ten, Oregon. They storm the field at Autzen, and the Ducks win this bout 32-31.